Hey guys, what's going on? Steve Cronin. Uh, neurotransmitters. I've talked a lot about them in this YouTube channel. So what are they? That's coming up. All right, guys, what's going on? So neurotransmitters. Uh, what are they exactly? Well, the real answer is we don't know. Theoretically, neurotransmitters are chemicals. They're messenger chemicals, and they follow along the electro electric signals that our brain produces. And I'll get into that uh, probably in another video called What Are Brain Waves? Uh, and these chemicals make us apparently feel different things subjectively, and they help our body function. Uh, it's part of how our brain works. So our brain, the like thoughts and feelings and subjective experiences, we think are at least correlated to, if not provided from, electrochemical reactions in the brain. And that, I'm not, don't mean to say that subjective experience is reduced to chemical reactions in the brain, but I think there's some really strong evidence that they're correlated to each other. So, uh, neurotransmitters, well, there's different types. There's different types of these chemicals. We, if you've heard stuff like serotonin before, serotonin, dopamine, uh, acetylcholine, right? These are different chemicals that your brain produces, and we can influence them by doing various things, like contemplative exercises or more popularly uh, using drugs uh, like prescription medication or smart drugs. So uh, prescription medication, one that I take that I am prescribed uh, by from a physician, so make that clear. In some areas of the world, it is not legal to take this unless you have a prescription for it by a doctor. It is uh, modafinil, which apparently we think, and again, we don't really know, but we think uh, invigorates the neurotransmitters dopamine and norepinephrine. Uh, similar in a similar way to Adderall does, right? Whereas there's some over-the-counter uh, drugs in some areas of the world where I live, this aniracetam you can get over-the-counter, and it is thought to influence acetylcholine. Now, the thing about neurotransmitters is that we actually can't directly measure them. We can indirectly measure them, we think, through like something like blood flow, or but we, you know, and actual, actually down to exactly how they work, it's a huge mystery. We're confident they exist, but we don't know exactly how they exist. So the neurotransmitter is just a theory, um, backed by a significant amount of evidence, I must say, so don't discount it completely. But uh, also understand that neurotransmitters, we don't know exactly how they work, and we can't actually measure them to really see what's going on, primarily uh, because it's not really ethical with the kind of research we'd have to do to figure out how they'd work. Um, because it might involve, and, and just to be clear, I'm not, um, ex I'm not trained uh, as someone who would do an experiment like this. Um, you know, my, my background is in transpersonal psychology and English, but, uh, you know, it, it, it might involve some human case studies or, or human research that wouldn't really meet the ethical standards provided by most, like, Western universities, organizations, for example. So, neurotransmitters. We think they're chemicals, and we think that they're correlated to different feelings that we have. So serotonin, for example, um, we think is correlated with an increase in mood. So for antidepressant drugs, uh, these guys will up your serotonin levels. They have their, they don't have serotonin in them, just to be clear, uh, but there's precursors to alter the physiology of your brain in a way that we think might produce more serotonin. Um, the uh, aniracetam, right? This has the uh, acetylcholine precursor, okay? So acetylcholine uh, is a neurotransmitter. It's a chemical that our brain produces that we think has something to do with focus and memory. So if you get more acetylcholine, theoretically, you get more focus and better memory retention. Uh, now, one thing to also know is that the same levels of these neurotransmitters, the same levels of these chemicals, are different for everybody. So the same amount of acetylcholine I might need to really stay focused for long periods of time uh, is probably not the same amount that you need. In fact, if you get too much of these chemicals, and this is why you should always kind of do any kind of self-experimentation uh, if you are into that stuff under the care of a physician, especially when taking uh, something like a prescription drug, you have to go through a physician to get it. Uh, but if you take too much of, this, uh, of, these, of these chemicals, you'll have some really nasty side effects. For example, with uh, acetylcholine, a side effect, side effect might be uh, fatigue, right? Or uh, headaches. Uh, with dopamine, dopamine has a lot to do with movement and mood and uh, focus and energy, a sense of physical energy. Uh, too much dopamine, you might not be able to walk properly. 
your, your movements might be really rigid. So um, these chemicals, these neurotransmitters, have a huge effect on our experience of day-to-day -day life, how our bodies work, how our subjective experience is altered. And, you know, I wanted to make a video on what are neurotransmitters for two reasons. Number one is because I review a lot of smart drugs, a lot of nootropics, like phenylparacetam, for example, uh, and these guys affect neurotransmitters. And so I think it's, it's useful to make a video solely on what we think neurotransmitters are. Also, I think it's very, uh, it's, it's a responsible thing to do because a lot of biohacking stuff that I cover, um, really I kind of gloss over the, like, oh, dopamine, I gloss over it, and I don't really talk about, like, what the, what, what we think neurotransmitters are, what that chemical is, what it does. So, again, however, this is also a brief, a brief video, so, uh, and glossing over a lot of stuff anyway, regardless. So, um, the second reason is because I want to make it clear that we don't know what neurotransmitters are and we don't know how they work. And subjective experience, in my opinion, should never be reduced to a physiological change in the body, right? Because what is, so uh, let's, take, let's take anything, right? Any, any neurotransmitter, we'll just say neurotransmitter A, could be whatever, any, any one that I've mentioned so far. Uh, what is it? Well, well, a neurotransmitter is a name, it's a word, it's a label that we've given to a measurement of a change or of movement in the body at a particular time associated with a certain subjective experience or uh, associated with changes in other environmental factors that we measure at a given time. So, and, and then we, and we put a word on that entire process. So when you say, oh, acetylcholine, right? You don't take, like, you don't take, this is phenylparacetam, which, which happens to affect acetylcholine, we think, but there's not acetylcholine in this vial that we just take, right? Acetylcholine is just a word, right, to that process that I just outlined. So when, we, when I talk about acetylcholine or when anyone talks about acetylcholine, we're not talking about it as if, as if it's a substance that we know what it is and exactly how it works. There's a lot of factors and a lot of variables involved, uh, and I really think it's important to understand that especially in the realm of biohacking and how it's, this field is growing and how it's changing, that we don't really know what we're talking about here. And to suggest that we, that we know everything about acetylcholine and its, and its factors and, and, or, or serotonin and its relationship with mood or depression uh, is really, I think, irresponsible. So that's what neurotransmitters are, so we think. And I'm going to do a video on brainwaves and how they relate. That's coming up. Thanks a lot, guys.